UFC royalty Holly Holm and Myra Bueno Silva, a fierce fighter looking to add another name to her win streak, are set to cross paths soon at UFC Fight Night on the 15th of July at the UFC Apex. In this video, we'll be breaking down everything you need to know about each fighter's ability going in as well as the advantages they have on each other. Make sure you stay until the end of the video to see our pick for who's going to win on the night of the fight. Holly Holm is one of the pioneers of not only women's mixed martial arts, but also women's combat sports in general. Preceding her incredible MMA career, Holly was a boxing champion in multiple weight classes and federations holding a professional record of 33 wins and two losses. And after making the move to MMA, she eventually found herself putting an end to the freight train that was Ronda Rousey in 2015. After KOing her to win the women's bantamweight title, she would later fight names such as Misha Tate, Valentina Shevchenko, Chris Cyborg and Amanda Nunez. Unfortunately, losing against all of them. More recently, however, a win in 2020 against Irene Aldana and her last win against Yana Santos shows she's still a force to be reckoned with even at 41 years old. To date, her professional mixed martial arts record stands at 15 wins and 6 losses, with 8 wins by knockout. Myra Bueno Silva, on the other hand, is a young fighter looking to make her way to a potential title shot, and Holly Holm is an obstacle she'll have to overcome to get there. Myra is currently on a 3-fight win streak, with her last win being against Alina Landsberg, where she won a performance of the night for a submission by Nebar late in the second round. These two fighters couldn't be more different in not only styles of fighting, but also their career trajectory, making for an even more interesting fight. And we're gonna give you the rundown of each of these fighters' advantages against one another, starting with the preacher's daughter, Holly Holm. Advantage number one, experience. Holly has an extensive career in both mixed martial arts and boxing, and with that come a certain degree of comfortability in fighting, especially on big stages. Holly understands the fight game and is extremely understanding of her strengths and weaknesses, so she knows which direction to steer the fight in. The experience also means that weight cutting in the process of fight week is much easier on her compared to Myra, who has gone through it substantially less times. Advantage number two, boxing. Of course, at a boxing distance and during stand-up, Holly has a huge advantage on the feet. Her time as a professional boxer as well as her experience using it in the octagon makes her extremely formidable if you're in range of her punches. It's fair to say Myra is going to have to be extra careful when it comes to being on her feet. Advantage number three, knockout power. This ties into her boxing ability, but is separate nonetheless. As while you may be a good boxer, some fighters simply don't have the power to knock someone out cold. Holly, however, does. She showed more than once that she has the ability to knock her opponent out cold, something which Myra doesn't have or hasn't shown yet, given Holly has a huge psychological advantage in the fight. Now onto Myra's advantages, and the first, of course, will be age. While Holly's experience is an advantage, it also means she is much older. 10 years older to be exact. And with Myra being 31, she is beginning to enter the years of her prime as a fighter, both physically and experientially. This is a huge advantage as older fighters are of course not as physically strong and capable of their younger counterparts. They also tend to have less to lose. And with an already decorated career, Holly has cemented herself as a great fighter already. Myra, on the other hand, has yet to do so, meaning the person who wants it more that night is most likely to be Myra. Myra's second advantage is her grappling and submission. With a last name like Silva, it's no surprise that Myra has incredible Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and this is going to be a problem for Holly in the octagon. Her last fight she managed to win by knee bar, and the fight before that by an arm bar. And with seven of her ten wins being from submission, it's fair to say that submissions are a specialty and what Holly has to be most wary of in their fight. Myra's third and final advantage is her unpredictability. Fighters who are on the come up are constantly evolving and improving and Myra is no different. Being so early in her career, she has the potential to improve in many aspects of her game and it's likely she has, possibly eager to show it off in her upcoming fight. Holly has to watch out for the improvements that she might not have seen in her previous performances and adapt to them on the spot 
winning the Octagon. And now that you know the advantages for each fighter has, it is time to tell you our pick for who comes out on top for this fight. Before we do that, we hold a monthly shout out and want you to enter so you stand a chance of winning. All you have to do is comment I sub down in the comment section below to be in with a chance. So make sure to enter. We believe that unfortunately for Holly, her career is slowly drawing to a close and much like other MMA legends who continue to fight while past their primes of their career, a devastating loss is usually on the horizon. And we believe Myra has the submission skills to end the fight early and upset many in the MMA community. Anything is possible in the cage, but the chance of Holly managing to knock out Myra is very low. Holly's best chance would be taking the fight to a decision and outstriking Myra while stopping her getting close enough for a takedown or a clinch. As to whether Holly is going to be able to stay out of reach and avoid being submitted for the duration of the fight, we don't think so. Let us know your thoughts on how the fight will go down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.